Hello, hello. Um, so today I had a big day of travel. I traveled from, uh, from Bangkok to Kuaiin in the south of Thailand. I'm going there because tomorrow I'm uh, interviewing someone at a big vineyard, like a Thai vineyard. That sounded very unusual for people to do wine here. And I had the opportunity in the past to actually try their wine and I thought it was pretty good. So it was cool like to actually go see what makes it a bit different as well as uh, the challenges they encounter when growing uh, grapevines here and uh, as today was a bit longer to get in a van for four hours and uh, yeah so I'm a bit tired there was no way I was going to do the interview today so instead I decided to uh, take a break for the day to so, you know find a nice beach in uh, yeah, rest a little bit. Huayin is a charming coastal town on the Gulf of Thailand, known for its tranquil beaches, vibrant markets, and natural beauty. Located only 200 kilometers away from Bangkok, it is mostly known as a beach resort for Thai people who want to leave the capital for a few days. To be honest, there wasn't that much to see in the town itself. But when visiting, I discovered a very unlikely restaurant near the beachside that was offering both Swiss and Thai specialties. I really didn't expect to find fondue in Thailand. For lunch, I tried their rosti, which were pretty good. And I discovered that they actually had a very nice selection of Swiss wine. Who would have thought? Afterwards, I mostly spent the afternoon on the beach enjoying the view, and after a nice dinner at a local restaurant, I got ready to visit the biggest vineyard in Thailand the next day. In the morning, I took a taxi to go to Huayin Mansun Vineyard, only a mere 30 minutes away from the city center. The trip was short, but it allowed me to take a look at the surrounding countryside, which was a very nice change from the concrete jungle of Bangkok. Manson Valley is the biggest wine producing company in Thailand and was one of the pioneering companies in the country. With 110 hectares, its flagship vineyard in Huayin is the largest in the country. The company itself produces close to 300,000 bottles a year, which is around a third of the wine produced in Thailand. The company's story is actually very interesting. It was founded in 2001 by Chalem Yuvidia, a wine-loving billionaire who is best known as the co-owner of the Red Bull brand. Chalem Yuvidia has always been passionate about wine and was convinced of the country's ability to produce great wines, despite being located in a region that many specialists believed was unadapted to growing vines. For more than 20 years, he has been committed to creating the Thai wine culture. He went looking for a location that would be suitable for such a project and first established a vineyard near Huayin before expanding to other areas of Thailand like near Chiang Mai. After I arrived to the vineyard, I had a couple of hours left 
before I had to go on a tour with the manager of the vineyard. So I used that time to go through the vineyard as well as visit a very modern estate. And as lunch was coming, I tried the restaurant and I had very nice food, even if it was a little bit pricey. And of course, I had to taste the wine. I was very impressed by the diversity of wines that they produce in Thailand. The whole range was there, from red to white, rosé, late harvest, and even some sparkling. But it was not just the choice that surprised me. The quality of the wine was very high. It was a very pleasant experience. And I had so many questions I had to ask now to understand how they managed to come up with such a great product. Thankfully, it was almost time for my tour with the Venus manager to start. So it was the perfect time for me to get these questions answered. The, our vineyard land is level, like about 200 meters above the sea. Yeah, that's why, like, do you remember that um, I mentioned about our owner vision that he believed that this land, yeah, can be great to grow the grape. Yeah, mm -hmm. because we all, like, over, over the sea of 200 meters and we are in the highest uh, mountain with the all the like you know mountain around and here it's like um can get you know the seaside wind really i mean like i i, I don't know the like the specific word but it's a good thing that yeah he found this land uh, and uh, so here it's only the vineyard right like where where the where the the wine is made is in another location. Yeah, only we, like here, we only grow the grape, only the vineyard, and we send the, the fresh, the fresh grape product, like that, that we, we, we got it here to Bangkok because we have our own factory and we do the produce is there. Okay. Yeah, so we separate two parts. The vineyard is here and produce in Bangkok. Yeah. While driving through the vineyard, the manager gave me more information regarding how the estate is run and how much locals were involved in the running of the vineyard. According to her, the owner of Manson Valley did not just want to produce a Taiwan culture, also wanted the vineyard to benefit the local people. Our owner, he really like, uh, have a good heart and he's really open. I would say that all the farmer that belong to the vineyard. They are from, you know, a local people because here is on the countryside from the town in Hoi Hin. And I mean, like this vineyard get a lot of life for them, you know, like working, money. Yeah, I think it's like, uh, he gave a lot of opportunity for local people here as well. And beside the vineyard, I would say on the Alvar de Sala restaurant, Half of the the like the worker over there are from the local like village nearby village as well. What are the main challenges to grow grapes here? Uh, obviously the weather is the most challenging to grow the grape here. Like you know in in Thailand, I would say we have only two seasons. Yeah. Um, like summer season and rainy season. Actually, after after March, like we get to in in the between of summer and rainy, and after April will be rainy season. So it's kind of difficult to control. Yeah. Do you get lots of disease or fungus or things yeah, like? Yeah, yeah, yes. And also, like you know, um, the land. I mean, like. The quality of the land here is also depend of the the weather because sometimes we can get effect from the like the hot storm like you know it's happened many times here the hot storm came with the big wind without raining without the rain yeah so you can see like now is 
now we like our land start to getting dry a lot yeah as the vineyards manager was explaining growing grapes in tropical climates differs significantly from temperate regions like Europe. In tropical conditions, vines are evergreen. They continuously grow, prioritizing vegetative over reproductive growth, reducing grape yield and quality. Guiding the plant's growth and timing the production cycles becomes necessary. This resulted in a strategy from local winemakers called the two seasons, one crop approach. Despite the potential for two harvests, this strategy focuses on a single harvest to enhance grape quality, avoiding the need for double fruit production. Indeed, due to the frequent rain during the rainy season, it is not possible to produce premium grapes during that part of the year. Grapes formed during this period are pruned, allowing the plant to recover and strengthen for the subsequent dry season where the harvest takes place. Another challenge which may seem strange, given we are in the tropics, is not enough sunlight during the chosen growing period. The dry season in Thailand happens between November and May, and as Thailand is in the northern hemisphere, these are winter months, and the daylight hours are limited. This requires winemakers to defoliate the plants as the season progresses, ensuring the fruit receives as much sunlight as possible. Viticulture is key to grape growing in the tropics. A good example of this is the need to find the right combination of fruit stock and grape varieties to have the best results in this climate. One of the trickiest challenge that people had to deal with when people first set up a vineyard in Thailand was trying to find grape varietals that were well adapted to the local situation. Mountain Valley grows 10 different varietals, but five of them represent the majority of the vineyard. Shiraz, Colomba, Chenin Blanc, Donfelder, and Sangiovese. Local producers have also been looking for local varieties that could be used to do wine. For example, Malaga Blanc and Red Poctum. So before we try a lot of like a variety, more than 20 variety here. And then, um, you know, in time, we, we found that all the variety that we have in the vineyard now is like kind of perfect match with the like the weather in Thailand. Because besides of what we have now, like I mean like um with beside like Shira, Shanin Blong and stuff that we have, it's never been grow success here. Yeah. But I mean like this process is been like many years that yeah we get the final, like, you know, final result that, okay, all this list of the variety that is good and like good match for our land and the weather, yeah. Okay, and I saw you had an experimental plot or something. Like, so you're still like experimenting on new varieties? Yeah, we, we, we still keep doing that because we believe that beside of all variety that we have, we might found like, you know, something more. At the end of the tour, I got one last surprise, which got me very excited. The vineyard was built on a former elephant crawl, a place where wild Asian elephants were once domesticated. So it is completely natural that the vineyard also had an elephant sanctuary, with currently two residents living there. It was my first time seeing an Asian elephant, and if they are smaller than their African cousins, they are still very impressive. It was a very intense and fun experience. I was allowed to pet them and give them bananas, which was magical. Discovering Mansun Valley was an incredible experience. I had no idea that vineyards in these latitudes existed and were able to produce such great wines. This heroic effort to adapt winemaking to Thailand is not only interesting for the Thai people, but also for winemakers from all around the world who can benefit in the future from the innovations developed here when facing climate change.
I eventually headed back to Bangkok with the bus. It was a long way back and I was so tired. Also really ready for my next stop in this beautiful country of Thailand. I hope you enjoyed this video. On this, I wish you a great day and see you in the next video. Tschüss.